right, good morning everyone. It is time for Friday. Um, we're going to continue our discussion of set theory today. And uh, before we do that, I just want to mention uh, the music that I was playing was uh, Bootsy Collins. He was, um, still is alive, he's not dead. Um, but he was um, a bass player for James Brown and um, Parliament Funkadelic and things like that. And, uh, um, you know, one of the greatest bass players of all time and all that stuff. And I was listening to NPR uh, a couple days ago and they were uh, talking about his collaboration with Bruno Mars that just came out. I'm like, wait, what? And so um, it was uh, amusing having serious people discuss music that, I don't know, it's real music, but, you know, taking it seriously, I think, kind of misses the point when you got to, uh, yeah. I don't know, have you guys ever seen Funkadelic? Just so you know what I'm talking about. I'll mute it so I don't get a copyright strike. Like, I mean, you can see how they, you know, they dress up and stuff. Yeah. Um, George Clinton, P Funk All Stars, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Ohio. <laughs> um, yeah. So, if you've never listened to Parliament, Funkadelic, George Clinton, yeah, it's worth a listen for sure. It depends, depends on your mood, I guess. But, um, it's a, it's a whole genre that's, that's worth a listen. Uh, I submitted it right at 10 o'clock. <laughs> Is it late? <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. Um, all right. So the uh, canvas doesn't do a uh, uh, hard deadline on the peer reviews. It's a hard deadline on submitting the discussions on time, but um, not for the peer reviews. So you're fine. You're fine. It's not a big deal. I'm not really um, super harsh on uh, deadlines in this class. The only thing, the only thing that I will, I will be harsh on are um, midterms or the final for that matter. Don't, uh, don't forget. No. Uh, I had no Wi-Fi on my phone. I did it in your phone. Okay. All right. That's, uh, that's high risk, uh, computer science right there. <laughs> All right. So let's continue our discussion of set theory. Jazz is underrated. Yeah. Um, a friend of mine was like really into jazz when I was in grad school. He was the guy that I was kind of, um, he's a professor at Cornell. Well, to give you an idea, he's now. Uh, back then he was uh, just a fellow grad student. He's a pretty, pretty uh, intelligent fellow, as I think you can imagine. And he was super into, he was super into jazz. And so uh, he would take me out to, jazz nights in downtown San Diego and stuff like that. And, uh, um, yeah, I don't have, I don't have the, the mental skills to be able to play improvisational music like that, but you know, I can certainly appreciate people that do have those skills cause it's, uh, yeah, my, my smooth brain does not, you know, do that very well. Okay. Um, more of a string guy. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm a string guy too. All right. So the absolute value bars is how many elements are in the set. So let's go over the quiz and see how you all did. I was checking in on that last night and, uh, I was, uh, I was kind of surprised honestly by the results. I thought, uh, 
questions weren't really that hard. Although the first one was on motivated reasoning, but on not on the way that you'd expect. So motivated reasoning is when you, you look for evidence to support a preconceived notion or uh, you, uh, uh, you reason your way into a conclusion that you want rather than building your beliefs on the evidence. And so for the quiz, the question was, what is it called when you assume what is part of the tr uh, what is true of the part is true of the whole fallacy of composition? That's the definition of fallacy of composition. But fifteen people picked motivated reasoning. Why? Because they wanted it to be true. That was the topic for uh, <laughs> that was the topic for Wednesday. So it's a backdoor way of teaching about motivated reasoning by uh, yep. Change that tab. What happened to the tab? What's wrong? You see my FBI emails? What are you talking about? Yeah. Okay, how about now? My FBI, my FBI emails? No, there's nothing on here that's bad. Thank goodness. You never know when you get like spam or something, you know. Foxy ladies in your ear. No, thank goodness. No, this is all, um, the emails here are uh, all just different lists and things like that. And uh, this is all from the uh, C++ <coughs> standards list where I follow the uh, development of the C++ standard. C++ is a programming language. So, nothing... Nothing terrible now, although you guys are about to give me a heart attack. Whew. Okay. Uh, I saw my FBI emails and everything. Yeah. Okay. Thank goodness. Um, <laughs> I, was at a, I was at a conference and a guy from Google was presenting. And he's like, yeah. Uh, here, let me, let me pull up the email to, to make my point. And then he, was, he, he went to open up his Gmail page. And he's like, let me put this onto a different window that I'm not presenting on. Yeah. I know, uh, we know who you're working for. Yeah. <laughs> Fresno State. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's not, that was, that wasn't my work email either. Okay. So what's called when you assume what is true of the part is true of the whole, that is a fallacy of composition, but, uh, 15 of you or about 17% of the class, uh, put down motivated reasoning. Why? Cause they wanted it to be true. Why? Cause that was the topic for, for Wednesday. So reason themselves into the conclusion. So that was a way of teaching about motivated reasoning by having motivated reasoning not be the answer. Okay. Um, suppose A is the numbers from 0 to 11. How many numbers are there between 0 and 11 inclusive? There's 12. All right. 1 to 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah. Plus 0. So the trickster. I mean, most of you guys got it. So. Uh, yeah, so I'm curious. It, it doesn't it doesn't tell me what you actually answered, which is unfortunate. Um, I'm curious to see how many people picked infinite just because the, the, the option was there. I don't know. How many numbers are between 0 and 11? Yeah, I don't know. Infinite. I don't know. Uh, and uh, or probably 11. I, I figure a lot of people probably picked 11. There's 12 numbers. And A is the set of all people living in America who were born in the 1700s. To the best of my knowledge, there's no such thing as a vampire or immortals or eternals or whatever. Uh, I want to see what people put in. Nah, it's, it's all right. It's probably going to be 11, though. It's fine, guys. Um, so, yeah, nobody in the 1700s is still alive. In fact, I don't think anyone in the 19th century is still alive. Um, but I didn't want you guys to have to... Google that, because, yeah, they'd have to be, like, 122 at this point. And I don't know if... Yeah, so, basically, I just made it 18th century instead of 19th century. Just so you know, the answer is zero. And, I don't know. I don't know how half you guys got that one wrong, but... Um, don't worry, I put in the wrong answer. <laughs> a is the set of all people living in America 
who were born in the 18th century. Yeah. None of them. It's empty. It's an empty set. No people. Okay. Uh, what, what was confusing about it, Bailey? You're overthinking it? I said, of all people currently living in America who were born in the 18th century. Remember, you can just make a set however you want. I'm going to make a set of all books on my bookshelf. I'm going to make a set of all cans of Coca-Cola in the world, you know. And if I asked you what is absolute value of the size of that set, you know, and the set is defined as all the cans of Coca-Cola in the world, then you would have to count how many cans of Coca-Cola there were in the world. Yeah, these questions also confuse me like what the, like what, what, what was confusing them? Like, tell me. That's what we're here for. That's why. That's why you guys are here, actually. So I could. I could just record all of these and um, just throw up recording little snippets. And in fact, I wouldn't even have to lecture every semester. You know, all I'd have to do is use my recordings from uh, you know whenever I taught it first, like a year ago or something. I don't know. Here, you know, whenever I started teaching online. And then I wouldn't even have to lecture, just put it off and then get a TA to do all the discussion moderations and just sit back and drink my ties from the beach and get all that sweet, sweet money for being an adjunct professor, which is basically nothing, but you know. <laughs> uh, I thought the set for number two was numbers in between. It says including zero and 11. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. D don't worry about the side books. Uh, just, yeah, we're going to, we're going to learn more set there today. You looked up how many people were alive. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, so that that's why, I mean, I, I went over this at the end of the last class, but that's why I, I said, you know, including, including 0 and 11. Yeah. Okay. The size of A is supposed to be greater than 0 to 11. The size of A is how many elements are in the set A. So how many... Um, how many numbers are in the set A? And set A right now contains 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's 12 elements in the set A. Okay. Yep. Okay. So that's why I do a quiz. They're low, they're low, uh, low stakes ways of testing your knowledge, you know. And when you when you feel like beating your head against the table, you remember it better, you know. So better to better to shake out the the bugs now than on the the final. You know what I mean? So uh, A has to be greater than the set. No, no. A A is the set. A is the set. You know. Um, and when you do the absolute value bars, that is the size of the set. Okay. So A is. A is just the set. So like you can say A is the set of all even numbers. All right. Well, what is absolute value A? Infinite. Right? Because there's an infinite number of even numbers. Yeah. So A has to be greater than the set. Yeah, A is the set. Uh, in this case, uh, B is the set of all numbers greater than 42. Integers greater than 42. What's the size of B? The absolute value bars. It's the size of the set. And that's that's... But I told you guys in the lecture on Wednesday, that's the thing that always gets people because they look at the absolute value bars and they read it as like absolute value and uh, um, don't know what it means. So there, there is terminology in set theory. The absolute value of what is infinite? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so the, 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 the absolute value bars mean vogue, vogue, vogue. Um, the size of the set. So if you have an infinite set, just for the quizzes, this isn't real mathematics. Don't do this on another class. But if it just because Canvas doesn't let you type in infinity, you know, just I, I just say it's negative one for infinity. That's not it's not a real thing. It's not real math. It just allows you to enter it into Canvas. OK, so uh, when do you know when it's infinite? When there is an infinite number like uh, how many how many integers are there? It's infinite. There's no maximum number, right? Um, how many numbers are there greater than 42? Infinite, right? Because there's no, like, if you picked a number like 50, you'd be wrong because you can always pick the 51st number after it. Things without end are infinite. 
Uh, these two are both infinite sets. Okay. Um, there's some some numbers that are just large. Like if I made a set of all the set of all people in America, that's a large set. It's not infinite. You know. Um, the number of atoms in the universe is a large set, but it's still finite. There's still some number, right? So the uh, infinity is whenever there is an unbounded number of something. Every, so everyone born after 1900 is infinite? Nope, it's a finite number. If you're talking about the present day, right? Um, infinite sets are sets that don't end. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so let's do some more um, terminology. There's the complement, complement, not complement, complement. Two different words. Complimenting is when you say, oh, Kearney, you're the best professor in the world. That's a compliment. Compl which, after, after that quiz, who knows? Who knows if they'll actually say it or not? I don't know. Um, but it was a learning exercise, wasn't it? <laughs> my, my point here is to, to get you to learn, you know, not, to, not to have you have a comfortable existence. So uh, the complement is the uh, everything not in the set. Doctors hate him. <laughs> it was just this one trick. Okay. Uh, the complement is everything not in the set. So if E is all the even numbers, then the complement, and we, we draw the complement with a little C. Uh, that looks it looks like um, it looks like exponentiation, right? Like it looks like we're taking a to the seeth power, e to the seeth power. It's not. All right, I'm gonna. You know, it looks like you're doing like five squared. You know, you know, e to the seeth power. No, that's not that's not what it means. Do you guys all see this right here? Please pay attention to the giant red square on the screen. That terminology right there. That means everybody that's not an even number. Okay. So this is this is like a criticism I have of math. If you're like annoyed at this, you know, this doesn't mean the absolute value of A. This means the size of A. This doesn't mean e to the seeth power. It means everything not in e. Yeah. Equals mc squared. I don't know. Um, uh, yeah, so if, if the universe is z, and e is defined as all the even numbers in z, then e complement is every everybody in the universe that isn't in e. So all elements, all elements of the universe, in this case, we're talking about z, all elements that are not in E. So all the odd numbers. Okay. So e, it's not E to the seeth power, it's just E complement is how, is how you'd read that. This is an exponentiation, it's just E complement. That's how we'd write it. Okay, so if we're in Z6, so Z6 um, means the universe has the following numbers. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. This is the entire universe here. Z6 means it's there's six integers in the entire universe. That's it. Uh, so if A is 0, 1, 2, 3, so A would be this region here. This is A. What is, uh, what is the size of A? How many, how many elements are in, are in A? Maybe I shouldn't draw A like in the set, it kind of looks, kind of looks like it's in the set, huh? Uh, let's see. A is, let's see. how many elements are in A? Four. Yeah. So the size of A is four. How many elements are not in A? How many elements in the universe, in the entire universe, and the universe is six numbers. Right? So Z, Z six means. Um, how many elements are not in A? Two. 
Dose. Yeah. And terminology wise, we write that as the size of a complement is two. Right? So a complement is this area here. Yeah. So if A is these four numbers, then a complement are these two numbers. Yeah. And the size of a complement is two. So once once you get the terminology, like it's not bad, I don't think. It's just they just reuse a lot of terminology for math because I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why they would use the same the same terminology. Just to confuse new students, I guess. I don't know. So a set with nothing in it is written like this. So if I say D is equal to this, this means D is equal to the empty set. There are no elements in this set. I actually don't like writing it this way because it makes it look like there's something in the set, right? How many elements are in the set? It looks like one, you know, whatever this weird null symbol is or whatever, right? It looks like it's a Danish zero or something, right? Um, I, I, I actually would prefer writing it just like this, you yeah. know? Nothing. But this is set theory. So, yay, we have terminology. Yay. Doesn't make sense. Yay. So, this means the null set. So, the null set or the empty set means there's nobody in it. So, the set of all people. So, like, let's define D as the, the set of all people in America that were born in the 18th century. Okay. So D is defined as the set of all Americans who were born in the 18th century. It's a null set. Okay? It's empty. And so the size of D, how many elements are in D? Zero, precisely. So the size of the the size of the empty set is zero. It looks like there's one, but the this this just means it means nothing. So there's two more things we need to know. Three things more for today. Yeah, okay. There's uh okay. There's three more symbols we're gonna learn. So one symbol we're gonna learn today is complement, which is that thing there, the exponent C looking thing. Um then the big things, the big things in set terminology that you absolutely have to know is intersect union and subset okay and it's sometimes called the wicket uh characters i don't know if anyone here has played croquet but in croquet there's like these wickets that look kind of like this you stick in the lawn and then you hit balls through it stuff like that it's like golf kind of but it's like pvp golf you have like these wickets like looking down at the field hole here and so in croquet you like hit your ball through the the wicket and every time you go through a wicket you get an extra stroke so you can go like one and then two and go through there and then and yeah, it's two sh sharp angles so you like hit it over here and then your ball is there and then somebody else you can come right out and just like hit your ball and they can send your ball like flying off that way so it's like pvp golf basically um you played it yeah. it's uh my uh, my grandfather loved croquet, so um, he'd knock knock me flying, and then come back around and knock me again, and come back around and knock me again. And... <sighs> yeah, he was good at it. So do you bash each other with clubs? Yeah. yeah. So the uh, the the symbol here is the wicket character. That's what it's called. Um. Yeah, my my grand my my grandparents showed me no mercy on the card table on the, the croquet field. Uno, my other grandfather, would sit there and pass and then wait for the reverse. Okay, now I'm going to play my draw four. Like, You're holding this. You're holding this the whole time, Grandpa. He's like, yep. <laughs> Brutal.
brutal Uno. Uh, yeah, yeah. He was like Anakin, for sure. Okay, so Intersection. Let's talk about Intersection, the Wicked character. If you've got a set that contains apple, banana, and coconut, and you have another set that contains uh, um, date, um, eggplant, banana. I remember sets don't have to be alphabetized or anything. Like you can reorder the, the order in a set literally doesn't matter. Either something's in a set or it's on set. So the intersection of A and D, which we would write like this, A wicket D is going to give you a set and the elements of the set are the elements that are both in A and D. So this means both. Okay. So which one of these foods here are both in A and D? Let me tell you it's the uh, favorite food of minions. Banana. Yeah, so the, the answer is So the intersection of A and D is a set, and it's only the elements that are in both. In this case, there's only one that's in both, right? If we uh, if we had uh, I don't know dates down here in A, just make it alphabetical, then the set here would be date comma banana minions. Uh, do you guys understand that? It's so like, uh, if you look at A, A has four elements in it, apple, banana, coconut, date. And uh, set D has date, eggplant, and banana. So, um, and again, you don't have to alphabetize your sets. I typically tend to do it just for, I don't know, you gotta, you gotta write it down somehow, but you don't, you don't have to. This is, this is fine here too. Um, so what you do is you look at both sets and you pick out the elements that are in both. So banana is in both. Date is in both. Okay. Date tastes good too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a smoothie place around here that adds dates to the smoothies, and it, it definitely, definitely adds adds something to the um, to the smoothie, for sure. Okay. Does you guys understand this? So what is the size? <laughs> what is the size of a intersect? Do <laughs> two, yeah. Do do. It's French. It's French. <laughs> yeah. So the answer is do. There's two elements in it. Okay. And so once you get past the terminology, you know, there's like kind of a learning curve, you know. Kind of thing to set three. Once you kind of learn it, it's not it's not too bad. Ni, yeah. Each ni san chi koro si chach. You do judo, you'll hear that over and over again. I know how to count to eight in Japanese way before I took Japanese from doing push ups and things like that. Each ni san chi koro si chach. Each ni san chi koro si chach. And then uh, I took Japanese and I learned nine and ten. And here, here's the kicker, is that it's backwards from Mandarin. And usually there's a lot of cognates between Japanese and Mandarin. Um, like yesterday in my, or Wednesday on my tutorial session, I learned the word to dance in, uh, in Japanese. There's actually two. Uh, but the, the one that I learned was uh, bu. And in Mandarin it's wu. Okay. And in Cantonese it's mo. And in Korean, it's moo. So it's 
you, you can see there's a shared, you know, a linguistic. There's a lot of cognates if you know Mandarin. Like Japanese is a lot easier. Um, but uh, jiu, jiu in uh, Mandarin is nine. Jiu. And jiu in Japanese is ten. And Q is nine. I always got those backwards. And so, like, I told the taxi driver the address I was going to, like, uh, what was it, 90? You know, whatever the address was, was 90. And I told him 19 instead and had to end up walking, like, <laughs> like probably a mile or so. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> How many languages? I, I know English. That's about it. Um, I, I study languages because I'm bad at it. So they're they're interesting though. It's really interesting to study languages. But um, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't say I know any languages other than English. I can speak Mandarin at about the level of like a three year old or a four year old, and then Japanese I'm completely incompetent. Like if you like put me in a room with a Japanese person, I'd be like, "So, bro, do you, you took English right?" No, uh, you did, but you didn't remember it. Yeah, okay. It's my situation with Japanese. I took it. I can't. I can't do anything with it, though. Sorry. <laughs> I like just speaking to make it made of language. That's funny. That reminds me of uh, my roommates in college. I was roommates with uh, um, a Palestinian dude and a Armenian dude. And uh, the two of them would talk to each other in their own respective languages. And they would start like yelling at each other, and everyone's like, "Oh damn! Oh damn! What are they saying? Oh, oh my gosh! It looks like they're because they're like these like like really like you know muscular like big dudes, you know, and they're like all yelling at each other, and then they just like start cracking up because not, neither of them has any idea what the other one's saying because Armenian's not Arabic, you know what I mean? But like, uh, um. Nobody, like, nobody, like, like, they're talking to each other, you know, like, I don't know what they're saying, you know, and, and they would get, they'd start pointing and they'd point at you, like, you know, and you're like, oh, oh, what, uh, uh, you know, and, and yeah, they completely didn't share a language in, in the slightest. They would just, they, they would do that every so often just to screw with people. It's, uh, uh, it was funny to them. They would, they would pick fights with Marines and it, it was, uh, yeah, there's a Whole story I can tell about that, but uh, we got to do that there. So, uh, union is the next thing. Union is the upside down wicket. It's, uh, it looks like a U, kind of, and sometimes I just type it as a U in Canvas when I get lazy. Uh, <laughs> but it's actually its own. It's the union character, and uh, so. The union of two sets gives you things that are in either set, or both. So if we if we had the previous set, ah, dang, I erased it, didn't I? Uh, so if we have a which is equal to apple and banana and coconut and date. And D is equal to, I'll mix it up a little bit, D is equal to date and apple. A union D is going to be a set containing all of the elements of both of them. Okay. So you guys want to type that out? You're going to forget all this? Don't worry, there will be a quiz on it. And don't worry, there's Zybooks on it. And so... If you understand the concepts, though, the Zybooks gets a lot easier. Okay. Um, so union is either A or D or both. Remember, intersection, A intersect D, is it has to be in both of them. So in, A intersect D would be apple and date, right? And A union D is going to be all the elements from both of them. Okay. So what is a union D? What elements are either in A or in D 
or both. Yeah, technically I know coding languages, but yeah, not not foreign not foreign languages. Yeah, my my wife's really good at foreign languages. Like just sitting in a bar in Japan watching her talk to a Japanese person when she doesn't speak Japanese. I was just like How are you doing this? Um, you didn't, I, I, how are you speaking Japanese? You don't speak Japanese. How are how is this possible? What is, what's happening here? You're talking to an 80 year old Japanese woman and having a conversation. <laughs> would it be apple, banana, coconut, date? It would, it would. In fact, uh, it is exactly the same as A because apple I'm not gonna write the whole thing out, banana, coconut, date. Yeah, in fact, A union D in this case is actually, you could just write down A, like, because these are duplicates, right? And something's either in a set or it's on in a set, okay? So, uh, if we had the numbers uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and we unioned it with three, four, five, six, then the union of it is the numbers one to seven. Because one is in the set, two's in the set, three's in the set, four's in the set, three and four are in the set already. You don't need to write them twice. You can't write them twice. They're either in the set or not. So you gotta eliminate the duplicates there. Five, six, seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Cool. All right. So A union D is four elements. Yeah. So the size of A union D is four. Let's do, uh, okay, 10 minutes, good, we're right on time. So let's do another example. A is um, Alex and Betty and B is Pablo and Hani. Vresh. So Hani and Vresh were my, my roommates that uh, love screwing with people. Okay. Um, so the union of A and B is what? That's a horrible B. The union of A and B is what? You only know that symbol from rhythm games? Yeah, it's, this is infinity. The the size of uh, the size of integers is aleph null, so that's the more precise way of writing it than writing an infinity or negative one. So what is the union of A and B? A is Alex and Betty. B is Pablo, Hani, and Vresh. Not the size of it. I didn't put the absolute value bars there. What is the set A union B? You're going to build a new set taking elements from both of them. The only tricky bit with union, the only tricky bit with, for, for union, you just take the elements and just smash them together. The only tricky bit with union is if there's a duplicate, you, you have, you, you only write it down once, right? There's no duplicates here. So it's quite easy. You just, just type in the five names. Yeah, Alex of Rush is an easy way of saying it. Yeah, so it'd be Alex, Betty, Pablo, Hani, and Fresh. I'm not writing the whole things out. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Bailey. So, um, you guys understand? So the union, if it's either in one or the other, uh, or both, then it goes into the, the set here. And the size of A union B is five, right? The side, the union, the union is this, this is the union. Okay. The size of the union is five. Don't, don't, uh, yeah. Terminology wise. Don't get those, uh, don't get those mixed up. Okay. So if I say a is the number, uh, from zero to four, 
inclusive, and B is the numbers from negative uh, 1 to 2. A union B is what? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do as many as you want. Uh, yeah. Although I, I do need to get to a subset in a second. So, what is A union B? A is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so it's 5 numbers, not 4, it's 5. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. B is negative 1, 0, 1, 2. So what elements are in A union B? 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8. <laughs> it's like a blue screen of death of stuff or something. Um, it's negative 1 to 4. Right. So negative 1 is in B. 0 is in both A and B. 1 is in both A and B. 2 is in both A and B. 3 is in A. 4 is in A. So there's six elements in there going from negative 1 to 4. So, um, eight, no, it's not eight, uh, eight, the size of this would be five, All right? The size of this is five, but don't, don't confuse the size of operator. If I don't write the absolute value bars, don't give me the size of it. You, you know what I mean? Like intersect and, and union give you a set. They don't give you an int. Okay. They give you a set. All right, let's do another one. Uh, A is Mustang Pinto Jeep. B is Pinto Garbanzo Lima. So A is, I don't know, cars and B is beans. I don't know, but whatever. Uh, we're just going off the names here. So A union B is what? That's a terrible question. There's no one do either in PowerPoint. It's kind of weird. Just had a mouthful of powdered coffee sweetener. It's almost as bad as the time I... No, I don't want to save you. It's fine. For, for a uh, competition, I drank a shot of popcorn oil. You know, like the stuff they squeeze on uh, popcorn in the movie theater. Yeah, yeah. It's for a good cause. But uh, that was unhealthy. Yeah, uh, it was uh, in college, and they were doing a, a road rally where you drive around San Diego and do different tasks. And uh, the first people to complete the road rally would uh, win a ski trip. And uh, so one of them was to do a... You, you got to a movie theater, and you do a shot of popcorn oil. I was belching up popcorn oil fumes for the next day. It was quite horrible. Especially since some of the other... Um, tasks were like do a shot of warm Seagram 7 and stuff like that um, does not mix well with popcorn oil let me tell you alright so it's going to be Mustang, Pinto, Jeep Garbanzo Lima and the order you write them in doesn't matter let me find out you didn't even win so we were winning we were actually in the lead because everybody else was parking at the movie theater and I had the designated driver because you couldn't have the driver doing the shots and stuff like that I would just pull in front of the movie theater and I ran in said, hey, this sounds weird. Can I do a shot of popcorn oil? And they're like, I have to see this. Sure. And I do it. I'm like, that was the worst thing I've ever done in my life. And they're like, cool, peace. And then I run back in the car. We were, we were well in the lead. Everyone else was like parking. It was this big, you know, mall complex and stuff. And the, the person driving the car was like, oh, I know where the next place is. And I'm like, are you sure? Because like, I'm pretty sure that's the wrong way because I'm from San Diego and you're not. And she got lost and we, we lost their, their rally is that so it's before the days of gps in a car yeah i wasn't very cash money over yeah so i rolled in my breath smelling of popcorn oil and seagram seven yeah. and failure and failure my breath smelled like failure all right um 
So there's five elements in this. Even though there's three in A and there's three in B, the size of A union B is five, right? Um, trust your instincts, yeah. She, she had the car, I mean, yeah. yeah. So you guys see this? So we constructed A union B by looking at all the elements in A, all the elements in B, adding them all in. The only trick is you can't add the same element twice. Okay? So Pento appears in both of them, so it only appears once in the in the output set. Okay? That's the only trick when it comes to union, is that you can't have a duplicate. So if there's something that appears twice, you only write it down once in the output in the output set. And then the size of the set, again, you just count the elements in it. One, two, three, four, five. There's five elements. So subset is uh where do we go? Okay. So subset is uh a question of if one set is included in another set. So if A is Mustang, Pinto, and Jeep, is it true that all elements of B are found in A? Nah, nah, because Pinto is, but Garbanzo and Lima are not in A. So if I asked you, is A a subset of B, you'd be all, nah, brah. I gotta make that one of the choices on uh, the, the quiz. Nah. So, um, if, uh, however, let's say A was the numbers from 1 to 10, and B was the numbers from 2 to 4, is A a subset of B? Are all elements of A found in B? No. What about the other way around? Is it true that B is a subset of A? Are all elements of B found within A? Yeah, so A is 1, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. B is 2, 3, 4. Are all elements of B, 2 is an element, 3 is an element, 4 is an element. An element, remember, is just like an item in the in the set. Pinto up here is an element, right? Pinto is an element of A, Pinto is an element of B. So, um, yeah, every element in B is an element of A. So therefore, is B a subset of A? Yes. Is A a subset of B? Nay. <laughs> okay. B is a subset of A, A is not a subset of B. Okay, so make sense. So intersection and union give you a new set. Subset returns true or false. Okay, so something either is a subset or not a subset. For intersect and union, you are constructing a new set that is based on the, the two the two input sets. So um, the difference between a subset and proper subset is that technically A is a subset of A, right? Because every element in A is in A. So technically, yes, A is a subset of A. Uh, but usually when, you, when we use it in English, when we say, yeah, uh, the set of lawyers is a subset of all people who have passed the bar or something like that, uh, we usually mean proper subsets. We usually mean this. Um, is A a proper subset of A? Nay. Why? Because there has uh, it, it means both subset and smaller than. So uh, men are a subset of all humans. Uh, men are also a proper subset of all humans. Men are a subset of men. Men are not a proper subset of men. Okay. So proper subset means it's a subset but also smaller than, which is usually how we how we intend the term the term when we say subset. Uh, but technically, um, it, we, we just differentiate them um, 
just to handle this case. And and do you know how they kind of look like a less than or equal to and a less than sign, right? It's not it's it's intentional, you know. So this is kind of like less than or equal to, right? A is less than or equal to A, kind of think of it. Um, and but A is not less than A, you know what I mean? So they're they're kind of designed to look like the uh, less than or equal to. That's a terrible one. And less than signs. Okay. I realize Kearney's profile pic becomes animated anytime he talks. Yeah, it's uh, I switched it out about a month ago with um, Nathan Explosion from uh, Metal Clips. Okay, so that's it today. Uh, let me do one more for you. So if A is uh, the number is from zero to 10 and B is the number is from negative one to one, is A a subset of B? A can't be a proper subset of A, ever. <laughs> it, it, proper subset's deliberately there just to avoid the sort of reflexive subset property because it's it's usually not what we mean in English. You know, when we say something's a subset, we typically mean it's a smaller group. So, um, A is not a subset of B. Is B a subset of A? Are there any elements in B that are not in A? Right. Uh, that's how you have to look at it. Is B a subset of A? It's not because negative one is not in A. In order for something to be a subset, every element in B has to be found somewhere in A. This one has negative one, negative one is not in A, B is not a subset of A. So A is not a subset of B, B is not a subset of A, A is not a proper subset of B, B is not a proper subset of A. Um, they're just incommensurable, essentially. Okay. It, yeah, it's, it's like a kid's game, right? Like where you have, you know, you put down five cards and you've got three cards and you see if your three cards are all found in those five cards or something like that. Right, you're just matching all the elements and just seeing are all the elements I got over here found over there? If they are, it's a subset. Okay. Um, what if one set has two of the same number? You can't have two of the same number. In a set, there's no such thing as a duplicate. Either, you know, you you cannot you cannot have this. Not allowed, because either something is in a set or it's on a set. No duplicates are allowed. So if B is that, is A a subset of B? It is. Is B a subset of A? I think I was reminded of um, the buttershot thing because I ordered a butterscotch um, latte today. Brought back a bunch of bad memories. Got some flashbacks from college. Okay. So, yeah, these are both, uh, they're both subsets of each other, and uh, they're not proper subsets, though. So, A is not a proper subset of B. Nope. Is B a proper subset of A? Also, no. Because they have to be smaller. All right, so that's it for today. I'll put up a quiz, and uh, we will continue set theory on Monday, maybe, or maybe we do our last programming assignment. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Depends how well you do on the quiz. All right, peace out, everyone. We're getting close to the end of the semester. Yeah, we're almost done. And uh, meditation on uh, Sunday at uh, 2 o'clock. I'll, I'll post the information on the canvas. Peace out, everyone.